Okay, so let's now jump into periodontitis. And I think uh, I explained this before and I said it's like an extreme form of gingivitis because now here both the gums and other surrounding tissues are inflamed. Okay, so uh, let's jump into it. Uh -huh. So periodontitis, so as I said, is basically like an advanced gum disease. Okay, and now you start seeing, uh, you can now st see the these are plaques and then now the gums look like they have um, been inflamed because you can see the color is even different. You can see that even the color of um, the color of uh, the teeth, the way they look like. And also one very uh, common thing that you'll see, it's like the teeth become longer, but it is not so. It's just, just because the gums have been eaten up. So you end up seeing uh, a, lo a larger surface of, um, of, of the teeth than you normally would, would see. So you can see it actually goes deeper. So the, the, the gums are, are even eaten up. Okay. So what is periodontitis? Um, so it's a serious gum infection. So this one, as we said, it's uh, serious. That damages the soft tissues and also they destroy the bone that support your teeth. So it can ultimately lead to uh, the loss of tooth or even worse. Okay, so um, if you think of it, it's just what we've been saying that it is an extreme form of uh, gingivitis. So this one, it goes and affects the, the gum, the other tissues and even the bone. So periodontitis is common, but it is largely preventable. So it is usually the result of very poor oral hygiene. By the way, for you to get to periodontitis, gingivitis is well and good, yeah, it might come here and there. Um, but for you to get to periodontitis, you must be significantly, um, I don't know what is the word, careless, or I, I think you've just decided to, to let yourself uh, become very uh, poor in the oral hygiene, okay? Now, what do we have in terms of types? So the main types that we have for periodontitis, we can have what we call the chronic uh, periodontitis, and then we can have the aggressive periodontitis. These, by the way, they are very deep topics which you can have an entire lecture on basically aggressive periodontitis. But anyway, the chronic periodontitis is the most common, okay? And mostly affects adults, uh, though children can also be affected. So that is chronic, okay? So it's common and also affects adults mostly, but doesn't mean that children are ruled out. Then we have what we call the aggressive periodontitis. So this one usually begins in, the, in childhood or early adulthood, and it affects only a small number of people, okay? So this one is not very common, okay? And it starts from childhood, moving on into early adulthood. So this, those are easy ways to understand. And um, aggressive periodontitis, as the name suggests, it's, it, when it starts like eating up the, the gums and, and the surrounding surfaces, it goes very severely, okay? That's why it's called aggressive. Actually, it's very bad, and most people actually lose their tooth, okay? And um, so it's not the best form, okay? So chronic is not, I would say it's not as severe as the aggressive periodontitis, okay? So this is common with people and you'll see what happens is maybe there's discoloration of the teeth. It looks like it's even longer. The gums have been eaten up, okay? But these people can be taken back to proper oral health and some medication and they go back. Okay, we start having uh, some improvements. Okay, aggressive is very, very bad. So what really happens, I think in the pathophysiology, what I explained earlier in gingivitis is basically how it starts. And then now um, it builds up and becomes even worse. So uh, periodontitis, periodontitis starts with a plague. And I think uh, this is what we talked about, the biofilm with the bacteria. Uh, this, it forms on your teeth. When normally you take things like starch and sugars in food, and then bacteria finds somewhere to attach and something, some, something to eat. So brushing and flossing of your teeth can remove the plaque. But uh, plaque reforms quickly 
usually within 24 hours. So like, because you, you keep eating every, every now and then, like every, the minimum, okay, most people eat three times a day, others might eat even more, others fewer times, but the point is you eat every day, okay? Most, most of the times. So you keep introducing things that have uh, the ability to attach on your, on, on, on your, on your teeth and now create a, a situation where you can start having uh, plaques. So anyway, once you form these plaques and they stay on the teeth for longer than two or three days, remember, and that's why you have to keep brushing. So if, if you, for example, don't brush, don't floss, don't do anything for two to three days, imagine most bacteria uh, would usually divide by binary fission very fast. Okay, Like what we know, for example, for E. coli divides every 20, every 20 minutes. So others might even divide for maybe even every hour. But imagine how many hours has passed um between two to three days okay so once they you, you leave them for this amount of days they, they harden up okay under the gum the gum line and that hardening up of the plaque okay the plaque that has been left for some time and it has hardened becomes a difficult thing that now it's called a tartar okay now this tartar makes the plaque more difficult because now it is it's something that now has, it's like a, as it's has built a bond and a structure that is now difficult to be broken. Now it, it becomes more difficult to remove and now it acts as the place where the bacteria will keep uh, growing. Uh, I think some of you have realized this at some point you, you brush your teeth but you still feel like there's still some plaque re remaining, okay? And you can even feel it with your tongue and other things. Uh, and that is because the tartar has formed and, be, and because you left um, then uh, you left the <coughs> the plaque to stay there for, for a couple of days without even brushing. So you, you can uh, get rid of the tartar by brushing and flossing. You need a professional dental cleaning to, uh, to remove it. Okay, so I'm saying you can't. That is a point. Not, not that you can. You can't get rid of the tartar. Now, once you've left your plaque to become so hard from the tartar, uh, so at that point, even if you keep brushing every now and then, it doesn't do anything because the plaque has become so difficult and so bound to the point that now if you really want to remove it, you only need, you, you actually need a professional uh, dental cleaning to remove it. So the longer that the plaque and the tartar remains on your teeth, the more damaging, damage it causes. And so you start having now irritation, then you get inflammation of the gingiva, the part of your gum. And then this goes to the to the other form to the other parts of um, of, of of your of your of your teeth. Now the name periodontal, okay, we we said periodontitis. Now peri means around, okay. So if this is our teeth, and then this is our gum, and then this is our alveoli. Is uh, born jawbone. So perio peri means around. Odontal means the the teeth, and then it is the inflammation. So it's the inflammation around the, the teeth. That is basically what periodontitis is. So that means everything that is around it now gets uh, inflamed, and you get the disease. Now, what are the signs and symptoms that we expect? Um, so we'll have swollen gums, obviously which will be bright red and the gums, they feel tender on touch, that, that pain is there. Gums that pull away from your, uh, from your teeth. And I told you because the gums are being eaten away and, and what we are having, the gums are receding. Ultimately, you'll, you'll see like your teeth are longer. Okay, because if this is, was your teeth and that was the gum, the gum is receding. Ultimately, what we'll see is a longer uh, tooth. So, new spaces develop between the teeth because of the gum being affected and their surrounding uh, tissues. And that gives more, more, more opportunity for more bacteria and other things and, uh, and, uh, and um, a continuous uh, vicious cycle. So, pass between your teeth might start forming. Then, obviously, now you'll have bad breath. Uh, so, bad taste in your mouth. You might lose some teeth. Uh, then there's a change in the way your teeth fit together when you bite, okay? Because normally when you bite, there's a way that your upper jaw and the lower jaw teeth meet and they fit together. But now because of all this, the teeth now 
they don't fit together you look like there's some spaces all over okay um so treatment the main reason for the treatment or the main objective or aim of the treatment is to clean the pockets around the teeth and prevent damage okay so the treatment because this kind is usually severe you might need a dentist or period uh, periodontist to actually work on that so but anyway the treatment options that they that are there is scaling first of all scaling basically is the removal of the tartar and bacteria from your tooth okay and uh, normally this is done using some instruments and that's why it's done usually by a dentist then there's root planning uh the root uh not planning planning the root planning uh, what what it does it smooth it smooths the, the 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 root surfaces okay and what it does now as it smooths it makes it very hard for the tartar to 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 build up because there is you know something that is smooth when you try to attach yourself to it you just slide over okay so that is uh, the the root planning okay and then we have antibiotics Obviously, they can do topical antibiotics or oral antibiotics to help control bacterial uh, infection. Okay, so this is normally, this actually must be done. Okay, uh, then also on top of this, we might have supportive um, management like for the pain that we are having. Okay, and also uh, you might want to use other, other um, uh, things like um, uh, that will actually refresh in uh, the breath okay but uh, sometimes it becomes so bad that they have to do surgery okay and what they do is soft tissue grafting because the spaces as we have said that that is the teeth and that that is the gum and other things now it eats up these spaces so what they do is that they take some tissue from other parts and then they come and insert so that it can fill up this space because these spaces will provide an avenue for harboring bacteria and more plague and it becomes a more and more problematic and then we lose the tooth okay then they can also do bone grafting because we talked about the jaw bone and other and other bones that are around that teeth that are affected that also bone grafting can be done so that now again that space is fit and we don't have spaces for um the continuation of uh the the disease or the bacteria continue to grow there okay uh, so before we finish the prevention um, the best prevention that we can do the best way to prevent periodontitis is to follow a good oral hygiene program so one that you begin early and practice consistently throughout life so what and that's why we normally try to teach the babies as early as possible <clears throat> remember we've said like things like aggressive periodontitis normally start in um uh, when people are still uh, young okay uh, going to early adulthood so if if we teach children as early as possible the better okay so brushing of their teeth at least twice a day that is morning and before going to bed or brushing after every meal or snack okay then flossing is also an important thing just normal hygiene and even just um um, just making sure that uh, you rehydrate or taking um, water as often as possible is also a, a good thing because water will also, even though it's not saliva, it will also just be washing out some things that are inside.